guys, it's Tammy. I'm going to share with you guys today how I do my Kushaw squash. Kushaw, Kershaw, however you want to say it. Um, but before I do that, I want to reach out to you guys and let you know that I am super, super grateful for you all. Uh, uh, my new subscribers, I thank you for joining. I hope that you um, receive a wealth of things from this channel. My, my heart and my passion is to help keep old skills alive, whether that be cooking, canning, farming, gardening, and even some carpentry stuff for that matter, uh, and crafting. Uh, and those, that's my passion. That's my heart. And that's what I want to keep stirred up in, in, in this world. Uh, because we do live in such a modernized society that a lot of these things tend to get pushed up under the rug and uh, I, I don't want to see that happen. Um, and I also want to reach out to my subscribers that's been there with me for the long haul and I really am super grateful for you guys. I can't thank you enough for, for sticking by me and being there for me and you know there's a few of you and that has gave me suggestions and um, helped me help look from the outside in and been able to see things that you don't necessarily see yourself and help push you in that direction and I appreciate that and you know it takes a good heart to do that you know it's there's no animosity of trying to grow channel my channel bigger than your channel and blah 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 and I that's that's great. I'm just super, super, super appreciative of it. And there's so much love involved in it as well. And that is just overjoyed my heart. And I appreciate you guys. And most of you all know who you are. Anybody that's been with me in the past six months knows who you are. Uh, but anyway, I'll get on with this. But I really wanted to say that because I appreciate you more than I can say and uh, I bless you guys. I pray God's best for every one of you, old and new subscribers. And we'll get on with it. Hey guys, look what I'm doing today. This is my largest Kershaw squash. I absolutely love Kershaw squash. This one here ended up being 21.5 pounds. And the next one down from that was 19.5. And I had several around this, you know, that size, the 19, probably the 19.5 size. And then I had some that was, you know, this, about this big, and so on and so forth. But anyway, I'm going to cut this bad boy up today and show you how I preserve him. I actually preserve him in the freezer. I prefer to try to, I'm trying to get away from putting stuff in the freezer. But with these things, it's, it's hard to beat the way to preserve these in the freezer. But I'm going to walk you through this set with this. And then I will probably make some Kershaw pies. Because Kershaw's are known, especially down here in Tennessee, uh, for their pies. And they make amazing pies. And simply what I do is I replace my pumpkin for my Kershaw. Or play, replace, put my Kershaw in the place of my pumpkin in my pumpkin pie recipes. So we'll go through that as well. Anyway, let's get on with this and cut up this here Kershaw. Okay, guys. Well, naturally, the first thing I got to do is cut through this bad boy. You definitely want a sharp knife when you do this. And it is not the most easy thing to do. Now, with this large one, the, my largest one I like to save my seed from. And these seeds are super easy to save. All you really have to do is uh, wash them off and lay them out on, I usually lay mine out on a paper towel to uh, dry. And then I simply store them.
this bowl here and I'll just clean these out with a spoon. My chickens will like eating some of this as well and I, I usually lay mine in my compost pile because it's in the chicken yard and they eat what they want to eat and they leave the last rest in my compost pile and you're good to go. Just beware if you leave seeds in it, you probably have some growing in your compost pile. That's how I get some surprise volunteers sometimes is my compost pile. See these seeds aren't bad to keep at all. They're super easy to keep. Now I'll finish cleaning this one up and I'll be right back with you. Alright guys, looking at these things that can be pretty intimidating to look at just thinking what am I going to do with this? But to do it in the freezer the way I love to do it, I'm going to simply cut this sucker to where it will fit in my pans. As you can tell these things ain't the easiest things to cut. That's why I would not want to have to sit and do all that. Now, I'm going to simply take these, put them in my big oven. This is a big pan here. That was a smaller one. I'm going to probably have to do another one. And I will take aluminum foil. I've got my oven preheated at 400 degrees. And I'll, all I'll do is I'll wrap this bad boy up in this aluminum foil so that it cooks a little better. And keep your top from scorching out. And I'll simply do that right there and put them in the oven. If you want to, you can put a little bit of water in the bottom of this just to keep the, the skin from scorching when it first starts. But you're going to have a lot of liquid that, that, that comes out of these as they cook. But you'll put these in the oven. And I've got my oven on 400 with these covered only if they're covered I wouldn't put them on 400 if you're not covering them and I'm going to check them in about an hour this can always vary because you're going to have different sizes of these and depending on the amount that you have in your oven because the more you have in there the more con you know the more condensed the the heat's going to be so uh, I'll put these in there and get them cooked up and we'll come back whenever they're about done alrighty guys these has been in the oven for about an hour, hour and a half. As you can see here, there's fluid, liquid there in the center, so that helps keep everything good and moist too. The more I didn't have it around it completely, the edge is a little cracked, but there's no problem with that. Now looky here. Look how well that's going to come out of there. Now, at this point is what I like to do. You can wait till it cools down a little more because it's steaming hot right now. I like to get a spoon, which I'm sitting here doing this with a fork. I like to get a spoon and start breaking it away from the edges. You can even use a big spoon. Okay, so see here? You can use a big spoon, but I think that it does better if you use a smaller spoon first, just to get it off the edges good. And then I have a bowl and a colander that I'm going to take my big spoon get the big amount out and stick in here. Now look how much easier that was than cutting this thing up. A lot easier. And let this cool. We're going to let it cool down quite a bit. Room temperature or so. And then we'll place it in our bags. So I'm going to finish getting these out and we'll be back. Okay guys, this next step is not necessarily necessary, uh, um, but my husband likes me to do this because he has what he calls texture issues. And this is, you know, squash can be a little bit stringy whenever you first cook it out and bring it out. Uh, so if you have texture issues, I don't personally. I like it old school, not, not have it to do this, but he likes it done. 
and it ain't hard to do. It's not no major extra step really. Is I just put this in my food processor and give it a good spin, and that will take out the stringy stuff that you'll see. You can kind of tell. We'll see how it's a little stringy, and it don't taste stringy when you actually eat it like that. It's just he's got issues with it, so that's why I do. It. So I'm going to process all this up. And I'm going to put it in this pan, and then I'll get right back with you. I thought I'd show you the difference, guys, on this first one that I did. This is after I put it in the food processor. And that right there is just like baby food. I mean, that right there would be the perfect baby food. because there's And it's sweet and all that. You can eat this just as plain as it is right now. I actually like it this way. But... That's what it looks like after you process it. So you can process it or not process it, whichever works best for you. Okay, now that I've got this all pulled, I've got it pureed up really well. I'm going to take, and what I want to do is I like to put mine in two, cup, made two cups in each bag because most recipes call for two cups of pumpkin or two cups of squash. Because I use this in anything that calls for pumpkin, I use the squash in it. And uh, I like to stick my bag, I take the top of it, and I fold it back so that I don't get the rim dirty. And open it up good, and I can stick it in this two cup measuring cup, gapped open good. Because it just makes it a lot easier for you. And then I'm going to measure out two cups worth. And I'm going to put it in the bag. Now, you can do this in however way you want to do this. But the way I like to do this is I take my bag and I zip it up three quarters of the way, leaving an air hole, and I lay it flat. And I flatten it down really nice. I hope this can be seen good. I flatten it down really nice and smooth. Get all the air out, and then I finish zipping it up. And it should look like that right there. Now, I personally like to store it this way in the refrigerator. For one thing, it thaws a lot quicker because it's thinner. Another thing, it takes up less space in your freezer because when these are frozen, then you can just stack them up on top of each other. And I'm laying them on this cookie sheet now, and I'm going to keep piling them up on each side until I get them all bagged. And I'm going to label them, of course, and then I'll put them in the freezer. And then when they're froze, I can actually take the cookie sheet away because they'll, they'll hold their form then. So I'm going to finish filling these up and we'll get right back. Okay guys, I got the dates on them all real well. 8, 19. And now I'm going to be stacking them. Now sometimes you might have a little bit of an issue with these wanting to slide around after this. Uh, take you a spray bottle and just barely squirt a little water on there. And you do need to rub it in a little before you stick your next one on top of it, and it just kind of helps keep it from sliding around. This won't matter after they're froze, but right now you're wanting them to stay good and flat and everything, and it's, you know, it helps that, it helps that a lot. So I'm going to spray both of these down here and keep stacking. This last one I have about a quarter of a cup more in it than the rest of them, and that's fine. I mean, it's fine with me anyway. Um, but anyway, there they are, and so then all I have to do is stick this in the freezer, let them freeze, and then I can take them out and throw them in the freezer where I want them. I actually have a basket that I put stuff like this in, so it sets up kind of like a filing cabinet style, and that way they'll be ready to just pull out as I need them. I can have my cookie sheet back, and that's all there is to it. Okay, now, I hope you like this recipe, or, well, I guess it is kind of a recipe, this way of preserving the squash, um, it's very super easy and, and easier to do than trying to cut up your squash by all means. Um, tomorrow or the next day one, I'm going to be making some pies and I'm going to use my squash that I've done today. So I will be making a video 
sometime later this week concerning making a squash pie. And they are, they're super good, guys. If you've never tried a Kershaw squash pie, they're amazing pies. I, to me, they're better than pumpkin pie. And what I do is I just, con I just use whatever my pumpkin, well, anything actually that calls for pumpkin, I use this Kershaw squash. And that's just because it's so easy to grow. It the bugs the the bugs don't like it. Even the the squash borers and all that they don't really mess with it. And it's just a super great squash to grow. So that's why I like growing it. And um, but I'll be doing that recipe, and we'll throw that in there sometime later this week. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, I ask you to subscribe. And have a great week. And God bless you guys. See you next time. Guys, something else I like to do is I like to take another cookie sheet and stick on top of this. And it just kind of helps me keep them in control as I'm placing them in the freezer and stuff. It just kind of helps keep everything contained a little better. So that's an idea for you.